Hey everybody, today we're putting together a uh, men's Electra Cruiser 1 basic cruiser, about 300 bucks. And uh, yeah, we're we'll gonna put it together. We're gonna see how this thing gets together today, alright? Alright. Inside the frame. One bolt was actually, or one nut was screwed on way more than the other one. This one's like flush. There we go, about to impale my dog with a seat post. And that was all the way out. We want them to be even. So just to kind of warn you. So we're gonna make sure they're pretty much even. And we're good to go. Seems like it needs to have a little extra. Didn't feel smooth. There we go. Good. Good. Let's stand. Let's get a little bit of junk up here. Let's see if we can do this first. I'm also going to grease the wedge on the stem here in between where it's going to have friction. And then a little bit of grease, I'm going to need to grease it. So the fork here, the outside part where that's going to go up and down. The reason why I do it this way is because if you put a bunch of grease on the outside of the stem and you push it in there, you get a big old ring of grease on the outside. I'm still going to get a little bit, but you get a lot less that way. And this actually ensures that the grease gets down in there. So that's what you want to do. Walk around the right way real quick. Crunchy, crunchy headset that's been sitting in the box for for about a month or so, give it a spoon. I'll adjust them just a little bit once I have the handlebar on there to hold on to it. This is all six millimeter rounders here. <laughs> all right, so the handlebars are on there real quick. Front wheel off of here and let's get this thing cleaned up here and get all this box.
And some of you guys are probably wondering why I'm not trying to use a knife or anything else to get any of the materials off there. Um, I find it'll be a little bit faster than me having to try to be all careful and not scratch the paint. That's the thing is you can scratch the paint whenever you have um, knives and other stuff like that when you're doing that. I don't recommend using knives when taking off all this packaging. You know, use clippers to get the zip ties off. Um, but try not to use any knives because then you're going to scratch this nice paint job that's got on here. It's nice and glossy. Um, luckily enough, we got this one in without any scratches on it. Um, normally they come in all scratched up and dinged up. The handlebars have a little bit of scuffing on here just from being packaged on here. But uh, yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and finish up the fork here. And then I'm going to show you the next step of taking off the, the rear wheel and the chain guard. So let me get done to this. Well, we're going to go ahead and take off the chain guard. I'm going to go ahead and take off the rear wheel. Um, and then uh, I'm going to adjust the bottom bracket and then adjust the headset. And then while I have the wheels off, I'm going to adjust the hubs, true them up, make sure they're all good to go, and put them all back together. What I like about these guys is that there's no derailleurs and all that stuff. Um, but that sometimes can be a downfall because a lot of people want gears. They want to be able to get up hill easy. Uh, but some people, they need a lot less moving parts. And this has a lot less moving parts. So I'm using a five mil or, I'm sorry, a 4 millimeter Allen wrench to go through here and take this off. It's actually got a mounting post here. And there's another one here in the back of the behind the sprocket here on the top of the bottom bracket and it's just bolts directly right here it's nice and threaded nice little acorn headed looking or dimple headed looking uh, bolts for it set that thing aside make sure the spot it's not going to get scratched take out the rear wheel and what I'm doing here is I'm taking off the coaster brake strap here I like theirs theirs are actually rubber coated so it doesn't scratch up the frame. Um, the old walled ones are metal. They can scratch up the frame, but they're a lot cheaper and usually sometimes easier to find. So remember, always use the proper wrench to take these things off. 15 millimeter wrench, man. This actually wasn't on very tight, so uh, it always seems like it's some super huge gorilla that put this thing on because it's so tight, and this actually wasn't very tight at all, so. So, now I've got that off there. And I hang that down, make sure it doesn't slap into the paint here, because uh, customers will notice if you nick it. All right, so I got that done. Um, let me get you a little better angle here of uh, doing the bottom bracket and the headset. Okay guys, I'm gonna show you here the uh, the way I like to do this, um, just like that. Well, I don't like scratching the paint, so I always like to put a rag or something right there. Um, you hear that? It's all nastified. And don't do what I just did and slam it into the <laughs> kickstand. Like it said, I'm weird, I'm an idiot. So that right there does not sound very good at all. Now will it go away? Maybe. Will we like it like that? Nah. So unfortunately on a brand new bike like this, I am going to have to kind of open that up and probably clean it out a little bit. So let's find out what happens. Now remember, these are reverse thread. Now on this particular one, it has a 32 millimeter um, slot for the cone. And then it also has a 32 millimeter slot for the lock nut out there. Um, some of them will take a yellow spanner wrench that's flat and it will have two little grooves in the side and you just put that in there like that and then you'll use this one to kind of lock them back and forth. This one, what I can do is, since this is reverse thread, I'm going to go like I'm going to loosen it. I'm actually going to tighten the bottom bracket a little bit. And now I'm going to take this nut here and I'm going to try to back that off a hair. Now I'm going to back these up a little bit and see if I can get that to distribute a little bit more of that grease around. And let's see what happens here. Let's see if I can open her up a little bit. Take that off there. And that 
turn it this way just because I need to get this uh, washer off of here. Now we take the tiniest little flathead screwdriver. See, I unscrewed it a little bit and I screwed it back in and it takes this little washer and brings it out here. And it's a keyed washer. I don't know if you guys ever known that, but there's a little key right there that that goes on to. So we're going to this a little bit. And that does not want to turn still, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my wrench and force it through down. And let's see what happens. There we go. And there's hardly any grease on those bearings, man. People say, oh, that's enough grease. No, not really. that little bit of grease. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. I'm going to wipe it out. I'm going to put some fresh grease in here real quick. Let's do that. Come on, come up here. See, there's barely any grease on there and they use this little clear grease. And since they're using a lot of clear grease, I'm going to go ahead and wipe this off. Clean it all out. Okay. It's nice and clean. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean the bearings. You've got to use the air compressor to get a lot of the that grease out of the middle of there. So uh, let me do that real quick and then we'll show you what that looks like. I want to kind of show that's the clean one I just cleaned and that's the one that's covered in all the grease and it's got grease like up inside the channels and all that stuff which is okay you, you kind of want some of that sometimes but it kind of gums up and really doesn't do anything I don't think so I'm gonna get all the crap out of there and make it look like that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put her back together. Um, you can see there's a clean rag, and this is actually all the garbage that came off of there. Um, it doesn't look really good, man. It actually has a bunch of, I don't know if it's pain or what have you, but it has some grimy, gritty stuff that was in there causing all that noise. Uh, you never know. I don't even know what they put in there. So. I'm going to go ahead and grab up some grease, put her on in there, spread her around a little bit, I don't know, cut, and finger full of grease, there, that side, another finger full of grease, that side, make sure you know. And that should be enough grease. All right, so that's how I slid that in there. And make sure that when you put it in, that the ball bearings are facing inward and the outer ring of the retainer is facing outward. And that's on both sides. So you slide one ball bearing, your one retainer bearing on, slide the thing through and turn it around, put the other bearing in, slide the brace on there, kind of get the thread started, don't force it, let it do its own work. And then boom, it's starting to thread on very easily. Get rid of some of my grease on my hands here. And away we go. So let's speed this up. Okay, now the keyed washer, there's a key way on the top side of that 
thread there that faces in the same line as the drive crank arm. And you need to put that little key in that little keyway there. Put it right in there nicely. And see, I'm only doing this by finger tight. I'm not tightening it up with any wrenches or anything yet. And I like to grab some of this extra grease that's on there. Put it on there. Prevent rust. And prevent it from freezing or seizing, however you want to say it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the outer nut here. And I'm going to and see, I'm actually using the crank arm here. I don't want to use a wrench and bash the wrench into here. So if I can keep this still, this isn't going to move side to side. So for me, it's just easier if I hold the wrench and I use the crank arm to do the leverage. And I'm going to feel it. Just a little tight. Now I'm putting it on the inside one. I'm going to back that up to that nut a little bit like that. Do a little crackly crackly. Must be wearing some of the paint off of the uh, races. But I'm shaking it from side to side this way and I feel no play. So I'm going to make sure to take this back, the back one again, and back it back up to that. Really, really, really good. That'll lock that in place really well. Now that one gave me a little bit of play, so I'm going to reverse that just a tiny bit. And I'm going to do this one like that to that. Boom. No play. Go check it again. So I'm just going to remember these are brand new bikes and they're going to wear in a little bit. The cups may set in a little bit more. So over time, you might, when they bring it in to have it readjusted, you might have to tighten that up a little bit. But that's from re greased and all ready to go. So, uh, let me show you the headset on this bad boy. And we'll go from there. Now on this lock nut here that they have on the headset, I wanted to kind of show you guys. See there's actually a, a race which is on the bottom. Then it has like a lock ring and then a top nut. So with this one I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to loosen up that top nut, move it, and then adjust the headset with the lock ring and the uh, bottom race on there. So let's show you how I'm going to do that real quick. Let me get the camera back in position here. Now I like to use the snap-on wide mouth crescent wrench that they have. It actually goes much wider than most other ones. Um, it's one of my favorite ones. We use it all the time. And remember don't move it that direction. It's supposed to go down this direction. And then I'm going to loosen that up from there. And it looks like all three of them are moving at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the lock ring wrench. I'm going to grab the lock ring and I'm going to pull that off. Close on lock ring wrench. Put that right there. I'm going to hold the handlebar here with my face. Hopefully I don't ruin my face here. Oh, too late. So hold that. Grab that. Okay. Now that is a loose from that. And then uh, if your lock ring here were to have four slots, this one only has three, but some of the bigger ones for some of the bottom brackets and for fixed gear cogs will have four slots, or sometimes even more, then you can use the hose on lock ring pliers for that as well that's on there but this also has the pliers for doing the bottom race here um, I like using this one for the bottom race just because that's what it's designed for and then use the other hose on to lock those things together good to go uh, sometimes you can also use a pair of channel locks these are real channel locks which we like to use real channel locks these are really old because we've had them forever but also the same thing. Um, the main thing is, is that it doesn't bite as much of the material. This one actually has mud, like about another quarter inch longer material on it to do that. So, but you could, you know, in theory, use that to grab it. It just doesn't grab it as well. 
So I'm going to go ahead and grab that lockering wrench again. I'm going to grab this. The headset itself actually feels pretty good. It doesn't have any play in it. Um, I am going to make sure that I lock this down a little bit better here. Good. Shake left and right. Okay. Lock that in place. And then brace. And then lock this onto the lock in there. See if I can get it where they're actually going to work for each other. There we go. Cool. That feels pretty good. Now what I want to do is to re-lock top nut to the lock room. So let's move on to hubs, true, and let's get the rest of this puppy back together. Well, not back together, but totally together. Uh, let's do the rear hub real quick first before anything else. Um, spinning the wheel, it feels, it's got a little bit of resistance here. Um, of course, do the old trick of just unlocking the lock nut from the cone here. And I don't know if you noticed the trend, there are you know, pretty much like lock nuts and cones on everything that has a headset. So you have the part that always goes against the bearing, and you always have the part that kind of locks that place, or that locks that into place. Um, in most coaster brake rear hubs, the race here is going to be a 15 millimeter. The outside is going to be a 17 mil. Um, I don't know why, I really like my trusty snap-on wrench here. and unlock those. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that from here, but when I was twisting it, this is moving. So that means it's actually tightening down on the bearing. I don't want to do that. I want to move that a little bit, like this. You know, moving the, the bottom arm of the coaster brake over there. And I haven't completely loosened these. I just loosened them enough until that started moving. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to see if I can hold that in place with my fingers on that side. And I'm going to use my palm to hold this wrench here at the same time. Let's see if I can lock that down. Make sure there's no play. Let's see if it loosens it up a little bit. Oh, see how much nicer that thing rolls, dude? Way nicer. You don't want to loosen it too much because it does have to break in a little bit. Um, yeah, that was it. Let's double check these two are locked together. Yep, it's locked. All right, so let's move on to the train. Actually pretty good. It's only got one little spot that's a little out right there. Well, I'm thoroughly impressed actually. Usually these things are way, way out. Um, spokes aren't very tight though, but it is a beach cruiser, just a single speed, $300 beach cruiser, so pretty good. So let's move on to the front hub and chewing of the rear of the front wheel. Yeah, here we go. Okay, now we're going to go on to adjusting this front hub here. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but I'm going to take this acorn nut off of here. And yes, if you guys ever wanted to know what the nut on these cruisers are called. These are called acorn nuts. They look like acorns. And they cover the axle and everything else. So the official name is called an acorn nut. And then the reason why I'm taking this one off is to kind of show you guys. It's it's really hard to turn this. Like really hard to turn it. <laughs> it doesn't want me to turn it. This is how a lot of these uh, 
hubs will come in really, really, really tight. Now front hubs on most of these now are gonna have a 13 millimeter cone, a 17 millimeter lock nut on the outside. Um, I always like to use a couple 13 millimeters and test real quick and put them you know, on both cones and see if I can move it because sometimes they'll, they'll actually move. Like, like right now, this is actually moving a little more than I'd like. So that means whoever built these, they didn't lock the cones against the lock nuts very well. Um, I mean, even that right there was already smoother. So I'm just going to go ahead and move just a tiny bit more. It's a little smoother. Let's go a tiny bit more. And I wish you guys could feel what that feels like. Oh, yeah, see, that's, that's way smoother. Look at that. I'm, I'm barely even taking the axle now and turning that. Beforehand, I had to take this nut and I had to turn really, really hard. But I mean, look at that. It's super, super easy to turn now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and loosen that just a hair more because I can still feel a little bit of grinding on the bearings. Oh, that's so much smoother. You can even hear it. It's actually way, way, way smoother. Okay. Now that I've got that in place, and I know that this is kind of tight against the, uh, the lock nut's tight against the cone, I'm going to go ahead and grab the, the cone, lock nut. I'm going to make sure that those are locked together. This side was pretty good. Still feels really good. I'm going to flip it over. Put that on there. Remember, always uh, the bottom one, just hold it. Use the top to do that. And see, so that was not too bad. Oh, but now it's like perfectly smooth. And if you turn it a quarter turn, shake it back and forth, take about an eighth of a turn, shake it back and forth. Quarter turn, shake it back and forth. Eighth of a turn, shake it back and forth. You never know if you're going to get a spot one tiny little spot that's got some play in it. And I've got one tiny little spot that's got some play in it. Mostly because I've locked these things together and what that does is it doesn't move the inside one, or it doesn't move the outside one, only the inside one. So I've already adjusted the front hub on this bad boy. I don't know if you guys can see it, but man, this wheel, dude, it's so out of whack. The rear wheel was nice. This one, God, I, I think that that's got to be at least almost a quarter inch out. Wow. So uh, let me take care of this real quick. Let's put it on a little bit of faster motion. Let me get through this thing real quick. Now I know it's not a really important thing to have it perfectly true on a cruiser because there's no rim brakes or anything like that. But still, it's just a nice principle to have this thing nice and straight. I mean, just more, I guess, for peace of mind for the bike mechanic. So let me finish this thing up. much much straighter yeah nice that'll do great I'm kind of running out of time today to finish up the rest of this thing um, I only got about maybe 10 more minutes today